Hello and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to show you how to set up Unreal Engine 4.27.2 or Unreal Engine 5 for the Oculus Quest 2 and to start a VR template level and send it to the Oculus Quest 2. Now in my previous video, which I'm going to link here, you will have seen the entire setup for the Oculus Quest. This doesn't differ much from that, but there's a few version changes and a few things I've had to change to make this work on the latest Unreal Engine. I'm gonna go through what these are, but I strongly suggest you familiarize yourself with that video first. I'm not gonna go through the process of setting up a developer account, nor am I gonna go through the process of verifying the developer account or setting up your mobile device to activate developer mode on your Quest 2. You should have ensured that all of this is done before proceeding with this video. Now what I am going to do is show you which version of Unreal to download. I'm using 4.27.2 but I believe this should work with Unreal Engine 5 as well. You will also need to download Unreal Android Studio. In the previous video I downloaded a legacy version of Android Studio by going to this website and agreeing to the terms and I was actually using version 3.5.3. I am still using that and that works successfully with what I'm doing here. If you want to install a newer version, you can do, but do so at your own risk. Unreal, I think, suggests on version 4.0 for newer versions. So you could give that a go, but I'm this is working just fine with my version 3.5.3, which I've tested prior to making this video. The other thing I did was download the Oculus Developer Hub for Mac. What this will enable us to do is that once developer mode is active on the headset, we can access some of the features of our headset once it's connected to the computer. So I've connected it via USB uh, cable that comes, the, not the link cable that comes with it, a standard USB 3.2 cable, and I can see various things about my device and go in here and uh, change various functions on here. It's quite a useful application. In my previous video, I also set up ABD, in my previous video, I also set up ADB, which I don't believe you need to do for this video, but if you wish to do that, you can go ahead and do that. You could also install Android File Transfer or something like that, but I, I didn't use it for this video. What I did do was go down and download this latest version, which may take some time. It could be up to 30 gig, and it could take quite some time, depending on how fast your internet is and how long it takes to verify this. So go make a coffee and come back. Once this is ready, the first time you launch this, it will take quite some time to compile shaders. What you can do at this stage is go through the setup of your Android Studio 3.5.3 or 4.0. So if I just launch Android Studio, my one actually gives me an error message saying it's not compatible with my version of Mac OS. I've updated my Mac and I'm using version 12.2 macOS Monterey. Now I also get this message saying missing SDK when I run up the Android setup. I don't have to worry about this. I can close this box and just cancel and say do not rerun the setup wizard. If you've set this up for the first time, run the setup wizard as I recommended in my last video. What I will do, show you what you need to do here to get this working. I go into SDK manager here and under SDK platform, I only have version 29 active. Everything else is unchecked here. So just, if you want this to work like mine, check this, uncheck everything else. Also click this show package details and ensure that only version 29 is active here as well. Now under SDK tools, I have SDK this active, NDK, CMake and Android emulator and Android SDK platform tools and there's Intel Haxam installer active as well. I don't have anything else turned on here. If I click the show package details here, I have version 28, 29 and 30 active here, but I believe it's only 29 you need, but mine's working fine with these in here. Once you go ahead and apply this, you'll see some packages, uh, some time taken to uninstall some packages and add packages. This is the source of most of the errors and the Gradle errors you get. So if you get this part correct for the version of Unreal you're using, you shouldn't have any issues with the next stage. Click apply, okay, and you can quit out of Android Studio. Now, should you get an error saying can't find Xcode install for Metal Compiler in Mac OS the first time you run your Unreal Engine, which I got, I downloaded the latest version of Xcode, which I believe was version 13.2.1. This took some time as well. And after I got that error, Unreal refused to start, so I went into Terminal and pasted this command into my terminal. And I'll put this in the comments at the bottoms. Once I press enter on this, 
I have to put in my password for my computer and then all's good to go. So once that's done, my Unreal should launch without any issues. And from here, I would choose Game, Next, and VR Template, Next. And I can add starter content if I wish or no starter content. Give your project a name. And in many cases, you will have to wait for compiling shaders again, which for the first time you start the VR template level could again take up to 10, 15 minutes, depending on the spec of your system. Once this is launched, we see before us the wonderful new OpenXR template that Unreal have created. And we'll talk in detail about this in one of our next level, one of our next videos. But it has two hand interactions here. It's got some physics, a VR spectator camera, and lots of other cool features built straight in. And it should be compatible with all headsets. Now, if you've done everything correctly, what we should be able to do next is to go into our project settings and just check a few things to be able to package to Android. Now, there is some videos showing some of the things that you might have to do in here, in particular in the rendering tab, to get some better quality or get some more efficiency out of your headset. I am leaving all these settings, as you see, default here. If you've tweaked any of these, my previous video goes over some of these settings. There's plenty of other ones on YouTube which explain the best quality settings to use. The main tab that we're concerned with to make this work is in the platform Androids, and this should be red if you've never done this for the first time, and you click Accept SDK License. Here, these are all default except for the minimum SDK and the target SDK, which should both be 29. The other one that I've checked, which may not be active, is this package game data inside APK, and also, I will have something down here which says remove Oculus signature files from distribution APK. Once that's done, I can close the project settings and I can go into file, package product, Android, Android A ASTC, pick a folder on my desktop and open my output log here. And if I don't get any red error messages at the end of here, I will now have an APK Android file which is ready to use or distribute to other Quest 2 users. If you want, I'll show you what to do with this file once this build is successful. Okay, if this is successful, you should have packaging complete here. And I can go to my folder and just double check that that is done. You should have an APK file here, which will be around about 140 megabytes. Now I can send this directly to my headset without connecting to my headset at all to the device using an excellent application called SideQuest, which is a third party application, which is uh, downloadable for Mac, which will allow me to s upload the APK and then have that be played on the headset. But I'm gonna show you another way of doing this now. And if you followed all the steps, we can now plug in our headset through the USB cable if it's not already been plugged in, and it should show up in our devices. If it doesn't do this, quit out of your Unreal level, save everything, quit out, and then reconnect your headset, ensure that it's on, ensure that they allow USB debugging or allow this computer to access data, and allow that with your controllers, and make sure that the computer is talking to the headset. And then under here, we should have a option to see our Quest 2 here. And under Device Manager, we should see our Quest 2. Again, if this is not working, hit me up with some suggestions in the comments. But the most likely case is that you're not, you've are not you not set it up as developer, you've not allowed USB debugging, or you've not installed the correct bits of software that I've told you to do at the start of this video. Once this is actually done correctly, you should be able to launch the level directly to your headset through the USB cable. Again, if this is done for the first time, this is going to take quite some time, but subsequent builds after this will be fast. So I'm going to click launch and hopefully I'll have this playing on the VR headset in a couple of moments. Okay, I'm going to slip on the headset and in actual fact I should be able to pull the cable out at this point and if this is all successful I should have running VR test on Quest 2 there in the corner of the screen. Let's try this out. So the right hand teleports, the left hand moves me across like this, and I can switch weapons or objects between my controllers here. Fantastic, congratulations. You've managed to package your first Quest 2 app via Mac OS and Unreal Engine.
Now in the next videos we're going to show you how to build some interactivity and bring your own content into this VR template and it'll the tutorial will be either playable on PC or Mac but we're going to focus on the Mac in this one and see what we can do with this. If you have any questions about the install any anything about this video please hit me up in the comments and I'll try and help. Mainly subscribe, like and thank you very much for watching.